Hello. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Hello. Hello, hello. Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon, everyone. Hello. Can you hear me and see me well? Thumbs up in the chat box if you can hear me and see me well. Is everything okay? Thumbs up. Thumbs up if you can hear me well. Yes. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining. I'm super excited to be here this morning. And um, we're going to wait for about two minutes for more students to join. Okay. In the meantime, please type in the chat box where, where you're watching from. Where are you from? And how are you feeling today? Are you feeling happy? Are you feeling energetic? Are you ready to learn? Okay. Greetings to Cambodia. Good evening. All right. South Korea. Hello. Good evening for you guys. Hi, Japan, India, Bangladesh, France, Japan. Very good. Okay. We have, you're excited. I'm excited to see you as well. France, Turkey. Hi. Sri Lanka, Canada. Ooh, it must be cold there. <laughs> Moldova, right. Pakistan, hello. <laughs> From Mars, wow. <laughs> okay. Um, Yemen, right. Nepal, Nigeria, hello. India, welcome everyone. Sudan, very good. Somalia, Uzbekistan, right. India. West Papua, very good. Excellent. Good morning, everyone. Um, let me introduce myself as well. My name is Tudor Lamy. I'm a teacher on Cambly. I grew up in Phoenix, Arizona in the United States, home of the Grand Canyon. And um, I'm super excited. I'm so happy to be here with you. <laughs> um, very nice. Mexico. Hi, Abby from Mexico. Ramesh from India, Barishal from Bangladesh, very good, Poland, wow, we have lots of students here this morning, excellent, well, very nice, I hope you're feeling great, feeling energetic, and ready to learn English, are you guys ready, are you guys ready for today's lesson, I am, ready, thumbs up, okay, let's start with our lesson, and please, Remember, this lesson will be posted on our Cambly channel in case you miss anything. Just go ahead and watch it again if you need to, okay? So just as a reminder, check our Cambly content in our Cambly channel, okay? All right. <laughs> well, let's start. And today we'll be discussing um, a very important subject. We'll be going over medical vocabulary phrases and um, medical vocabulary and phrases, okay? Uh, unfortunately, we all feel sick at times and we need to explain how we feel to our family, to our friends, or even a doctor. So today, we'll be going over different name of organs in our body, common symptoms, and phrases to be able to give more details when we aren't feeling well, okay? And I'm absolutely that you I'm absolutely sure that you're going to find this lesson very helpful, very practical. So shall we start? Let's start. Are you guys ready? Ready? Okay, well, let's start with a very, very important organ that we have, and that is our stomach. Let's start with our first one: stomach. And our stomach is responsible for digesting and processing the food, the, the food that we eat. You might be familiar with the word stomachache. Now listen and repeat, stomachache. Not H, but ache, stomachache. So today we're going to be doing lots of pronunciation exercises. Stomachache, please say it aloud, okay? In a stomachache, is basically pain in your stomach. When going to the doctor, he might ask you um, what type of pain you have. 
we use the verb to have. So we say, I have a stomachache. I have a stomachache. Now, to describe the type of pain, you can say, I have, I have a sharp pain in my stomach. Sharp means sudden and intense. Oh, I have sharp pain in my stomach. I have a sharp pain in my stomach. All right. And um, another problem that you could have is that you might have a food intolerance, which means certain foods such as or gluten make your stomach bloated, <laughs> which is the next vocabulary word, bloated. That means swollen or larger in size. Okay. And we have two ways of saying this. I am bloated or I feel bloated. This is, happens to me a lot. <laughs> so I am bloated or I feel bloated. And an example of that is I had spicy food for dinner and now my stomach is bloated. <laughs> Spicy food makes my stomach bloat, okay? So here's an interesting idiom that I want to share with you. And this is um, when someone's stomach, when someone's stomach is in knots, in knots, like a knot, the person gets very nervous, anxious, or worried, which causes the stomach to feel hurt or tight. And an example of that is, my stomach is in knots every time I have to give a presentation. My stomach is in knots every time I have to give a presentation. I have a question for you, so please be ready to type. Has your stomach ever been in knots? Why? Or why not? Have you ever felt have you ever felt so nervous that your stomach feels like it's in knots? Please type it in the chat box. <laughs> what about butterflies in the stomach? Okay, that's a good one. That's when you're in love. <laughs> when you feel butterflies, it's because you're in love or you feel love, a, a very nice sensation of love. Okay. Like when you see your boyfriend or your husband, your girlfriend, your wife your significant other, you feel butterflies in your stomach. Great question. Um, okay, yes, so someone feels their stomach eat nuts when they have a presentation. Okay, if I eat bad, uh, okay. Uh, when I'm preparing to enroll in an academy. Okay, very good, Harry, excellent. That could cause your stomach being in nuts when I go to an interview or I give a speech in public. Thank you, Diane. Okay, exams, excellent, well, great. <laughs> um, remember, this idiom, this, media, this idiom means that you're nervous and anxious or worried. Uh, when I need to speak English, oh, well, I hope you, can overcome that fear. Uh, swelly. I know it could be nerve wracking during exams. Okay. Thank you, Abdullah, for joining in. Um, remember, you can check our content. You can check this lesson again if you're late or if you just join in. Don't worry, you can check it out. When I meet, okay, meeting the police, that could be. <laughs> All right, public speaking, when I speak in public, Great, excellent. Well, that's very, very good. Let's move on to our next organ. Thank you so much for your participation today. Excellent and excellent answers. Keep them up, okay? Keep practicing, keep typing. And let's move on to our next organ. And um, these are our intestines, organ number two. Now, 
our intestines are the tubes in our body through the which the food passes when it has left your stomach. So it goes from our stomach to our intestines. And they are also part of the digestive system. We talked about bloating. Bloating is also a problem for the intestines. It can be caused by excess of air, gas, or what we eat. Another thing that you might experience is abdominal, abdominal pain or cramps. Ugh. Abdominal pain or cramps. Please repeat this word, cramps. Okay, out oh, cramps, which uh, the definition is painful, involuntary contractions, okay? Painful, involuntary contractions. Our example here is, I get really bad cramps if I eat too much ice cream. Oh, I get really bad cramps if I eat too much ice cream. Do you get cramps? I do if I eat too much ice cream. <laughs> what gives you cramps? Oh, painful involuntary contractions. Ouch, cramps. Okay, that's our first vocabulary word. Our next one, it's a, an interesting one. Okay, our next word is constipation. 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 <laughs> and that means being unable to relieve yourself or being unable to use the bathroom, okay? If you can't go to the bathroom, that means that you're constipated. You have constipation. Um, and the adjective, like I said, is constipated, constipated. So if the doctor asks for symptoms, you can say, I'm constipated. Or if you want to explain what causes constipation, you can say, I get constipated when I eat um, rice, when I eat a lot of bread, when I, I get constipated when I eat a lot of cookies <laughs> or anything that causes constipation. You can explain that. I get constipated when. Now, the opposite of constipation is diarrhea, diarrhea. And that means the opposite because food passes very quickly through your intestines, very quickly, and you have to use the bathroom <laughs> or relieve yourself many times. Like, oh, you're running around, you have to use the bathroom very often. So it's the opposite of constipation, constipation diarrhea. You really, really need to use the bathroom many times. And for this, we use the verb have as well. I have diarrhea. I have diarrhea. Now, <laughs> for this vocabulary, for these vocabulary words, I want to ask you questions because that is what we call in English TMI too much information. So I don't want to know <laughs> if you get constipated, constipated or if you get diarrhea sometimes. That's for you to know, for your doctor to know. We call the TMI, too much information. I don't need to know. <laughs> so don't worry. I won't ask you any personal questions about these two symptoms, constipation and diarrhea, but please keep them in mind, okay? They're very useful when you're explaining um, how you feel. Great, <laughs> got it, okay? So remember, cramps, constipation, diarrhea. Now let's move on, on to the, let's move on to the next organ, okay? We have a really good organ and our next organ, um, oh, actually our lungs is uh, our next organ. Our lungs are essential for us to breathe. Breathe, okay? They're essential, they're vital, they are very, very important. And our first verb is to breathe. Breathe, 
Now, I really want you to practice this because we have the TH sound. Breathe. Breathe with the TH. I'm exaggerating for you to see my tongue. Breathe. So what does that mean to breathe? Well, to breathe means to move air in to our in and out of our lungs. Breathe. The noun is, uh, this is a verb, to breathe. The noun is breath. Breath, okay? And um, when the doctor checks your lungs, he might ask you to, um, he, he will probably ask you, can you take a deep breath? Can you take a deep breath, please? He actually has something that he put, it puts in your um, chest and he asks you to take a deep breath. Can you take a deep breath, please? Deep breath in, deep breath out. Breath, deep breath in, deep breath out. Okay, that's our very first sentence. And now, if you can breathe well, well, you're most likely congested, which is our next vocabulary word, congestion. Okay, and this happens when there is fluid accumulated in your lungs. So you have fluid here, you can't breathe well, and that is because you have, you probably have phlegm, phlegm. Remember, PH in English is pronounced as an F, it has an F sound, so phlegm, phlegm. And phlegm, is mucus or liquid in your lungs. <laughs> so all these three are very similar and that's why I have some examples here for you. You have three options when you're talking about being congested. You could say, you could tell the doctor, I have congestion or I have a lot of mucus or I have a lot of phlegm. The three are essentially the same, okay? So you have options. Please use the vocabulary and um, tell the doctor how you feel. So mucus, phlegm, or you're congested or you have congestion, okay? Now, when you have, when you're congested, when you have liquid in your lungs, you um, start coughing that actually causes a person to start coughing. <coughs> that's, that's coughing, <coughs> okay? Um, now you could say, I have a cough, or I've, I've been coughing all morning. I've been coughing all morning, <coughs> okay? So that is, our uh, next one, cough. When you cough, when you, ca when you have a cough, you could have a cold or the flu. And when a person coughs a lot, <coughs> that can cause another problem. You could get a sore throat, sore throat. Again, the TH sound, throat, sore throat. <clears throat> I have a sore throat or the same, my throat hurts. <clears throat> Sometimes your, your voice starts sounding a little weird, graspy. <clears throat> I have a sore throat, <clears> throat> my throat hurts, okay? You could say both, <laughs> you could say either one. So that's our next one. This is a symptom, sore throat. If you have a runny nose, which is our third symptom, runny nose, you may need tissues because your nose is runny. So if you have a runny nose, uh, you could say, I have a runny nose 
or my nose is running. Okay, so two options, essentially the same. <laughs> I have a runny nose, all right? My nose is, I'm sorry, my nose is runny. Okay, <laughs> pretty cool, right? So now you're learning how to explain your symptoms, which is great, okay? But, you know, if um, having that runny nose or a, a little cough, eh, that isn't that bad. <laughs> it isn't that bad. Um, when you're feeling a little ill or you have a mild cough or a little runny nose, we can use a really useful idiom, okay? This is our next idiom in our list, and that means... Um, to feel under the weather, a little sick, a mild cold, not too sick, just a little. So this is very easy. I'm feeling a bit under the weather. Just, you know, not so much, just a little. So I'm sorry, today I'm feeling a bit under the weather. I feel under the weather. I have a question for you. Have you ever felt under the weather? Have you ever felt under the weather? When? I hope you're not feeling under the weather today. I hope you're okay. Can you type in the chat box? Have you ever felt under the weather? Okay. Um, hi, welcome from the US. <laughs> Great. Um, Inhale, how to pronounce these words, inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, exhale, okay. Um, if, you, if you just join in, you can, remember, you can always check our lesson in our Camry channel. It'll be posted there after this. Um, have you ever felt under the weather, guys? A little, a little sick? Yes, I have. When I took the vaccine, okay, yeah. Right, I'm feeling uh, under the weather when I, um, when it comes to learning English, it's not necessarily, um, that doesn't really cause you to feel under the weather. It's when you're actually a little sick, you have a cough, a sore throat, or a runny nose. It will happen to me when the climate, that's right, when the season or the weather changes, that causes us to feel under the weather. Like, uh, from spring to summer, from winter to uh, from autumn to winter. Yes, that very good answer. Excellent, uh, Prioska. That's really really nice. Oh, sorry. Um, that was Diani. Very good. I feel under the weather this morning. Oh, I'm so sorry. I hope you feel better. Uh, very good. It's sunny in Italy today. Great. <laughs> Excellent. In winter, rainy days, that's right. Excellent, Manu. <laughs> yes, when it's rainy, you may feel under the weather. I woke up, oh, I work hard, and now I'm feeling under the weather. Okay, wow, you're a very hard working uh, person. Excellent, well, thank you so much for participating. Great job, I'm very, very, very happy. And remember, inhale, exhale, okay? Practice, keep practicing those words. All right, let's move on to our next organ, which is also a very, very important organ in our bodies, and that is our heart. Our heart is very important because it, it's the one in charge of circulating the blood in our bodies. When you go to the doctor, one of the very first things that he will check is your pulse, pulse, okay? He will check your pulse or your heartbeat. He checks your pulse. Um, he also checks your blood pressure. He checks your blood pressure. So he checks your pulse, your blood pressure. And one thing, if your heart is beating too fast, too fast, that means that that is called tachycardia tachycardia okay tachycardia your your heart is beating so fast you almost feel like it's gonna come out of your chest tachycardia now my mother this is a true example 
my mother can't drink coffee or else she gets tachycardia. Her heart starts beating really fast. Tachycardia. Another way to say this, or a common way we say is, drinking coffee makes my heart beat fast. It's the same. Drinking coffee makes my heart beat fast. Um, now I have a question for you. What? What gives you tachycardia? Or what makes your heart beat fast? I, I said drinking coffee makes my mom get tachycardia. What about you? What gives you tachycardia? Um, coffee. All right. <laughs> okay. Exercise. That's right. When you do exercise, your heart starts beating really fast. Thank you. Uh, Asan, very good. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, doing new things. Yeah, if you're really excited and you're doing new things, running, that's right. Running can give you tachycardia. Um, tea, uh, stress. Wow, yes, that's not good. <laughs> stress can give you tachycardia as well. Um, Mm, right okay well very good when you're in shock oh thank you for bringing that up when you're in shock we have an excellent idiom i have an excellent idiom to share when you're in shock when you're surprised when you um this is receiving good news oh very good thank you thank you for bringing that up because our very next idiom is when one's heart misses a beat or skips a beat. That means to be completely surprised by something or in shocked. Uh, okay, my heart missed a beat when I heard the news that my sister was pregnant. Wow, like that also, that means, well, that your, your heart almost stops because you're in shock. You're so surprised. So that's right. Okay, <laughs> that means uh, to miss a beat or to skip a beat. <gasps> so what causes, have you ever felt this way? When, when did this happen? When I lost my, yeah, that's right. When you lose your phone, <gasps> you feel like, oh no, I lost my new iPhone. Oh no, that's right. You misplaced or lost your phone. <laughs> um, I heart needs a beat when I saw my ex-girlfriend. Okay. <laughs> That's right. See my crush. <laughs> you're, you're in shock. Your heart stops. Oh, my goodness. That's right. When I'm excited, very excited. Okay. When you're very, very excited, then your heart can miss a beat. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you for keeping my heart miss a beat when I hear bad news. Yes. Thank you, Abby. Thank you. Very good. You guys are doing excellent. I want to clap. You guys are awesome. Keep the good work. Okay. Now let's move on to our next organ. Okay. And last but not least, we have our brain. Okay. And the brain is the organ in charge of our nervous system. So it's a very, very important organ. Headaches. Uh, headaches are among the most common disorders of the nervous system. System. So um, a headache means you have pain in your head. Ouch. Uh, that's a headache. Headache. It sounds like stomachache. Remember? A-C-A-C-H-E. Ache. Headache. Stomachache. Not ch, k, 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 headache, headache. Please repeat this word, say it aloud so you remember the pronunciation, okay? Remember at the, at the beginning I said we were going to be practicing a lot of pronunciation, so headache, headache, pain in your head. And um, you can say, very easy, I have a headache or my head hurts. 
Uh, my head hurts. Does your head hurt? <laughs> or what causes your head to hurt? Do you get headaches? I hope not. I actually don't get headaches very often, which is good. But I know a lot of people get headaches. My mom gets headaches all the time. Okay, so you could say I have a headache or my head hurts. If the pain is too severe or sharp, remember we learned the word sharp, which is intense. If the pain is too severe or sharp and it lasts for hours or days, it's called that migraine, migraine. Please repeat, migraine. A migraine can cause other symptoms like nausea. When you, when you have a migraine, you may feel nauseous, nausea, or vomiting, like vomiting, or you can have sensitivity to light. Some people need to have or keep the rooms dark, sensitivity to light. Those are some symptoms of a migraine. You can describe someone or yourself by saying, I suffer from migraines. I suffer from migraines. Or my friend suffers from migraines. And if you get them regularly or very often, you can use the expression to suffer from. I suffer from. Not just migraines, but something that happens very often, okay? I suffer from um, congestion. I, I suffer from constipation uh, or cramps, whatever it is I suffer from. In this case, I suffer from migraines, okay? I hope you don't. <laughs> I hope you don't. But if you do, you can say I suffer from, okay? Now, an idiom related to this is actually um, something that we just discussed, to beat your brains out, to beat your brains out. And that means to think about something very hard and for a long time, to beat your brains out. And let me show you an example here. He's, he's been beating his brains out all afternoon trying to finish his homework. He's been beating his brains out all afternoon, trying to finish his homework. So you study very hard. You're thinking about something for a long time. And uh, you're beating your brains out. <laughs> beating your brains. <laughs> it could cause you, it could give you a headache or a migraine after that. So I have a question for you. Have you ever beaten your brains out? When? Please type it in the chat box. Have you ever beaten your brains out? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Have you ever beaten your brains out? Because you're thinking too hard or for a long time. Like when you study or when you're trying to concentrate, you have a lot of work. Um, okay. Yes, thinking about exams can beat your brains out. <laughs> okay, when I sleep, when I sleep in at midnight. All right, thank you, thank you. Um, when I was in med school, wow, yes, that definitely can beat your brains out. <laughs> you have to study for hours, right? You have to study all night when you're in med school <laughs> or medical school. Excellent. I uh, beat my brain out when I learned English. Okay, uh, I beat my bra brains to beat your brains out. So I beat my brains out when I learn English or when I study English. Okay. Mm. When you drink a lot. Okay. Well, um, all right. <laughs> That's because you're concentrated. Okay. Um, Trying to take my portfolio. Okay, yes, I've been beating my brains out trying to make my portfolio, right? That's right. My brain was, uh, my brains, uh, I beat my brains out 
remember to keep that. I beat my brains out when I did uh, the research. When I did research. Oh, excellent. Very good. When I talk to others in English. Very good. Um, all right. Thank you. Excellent job. Very, very good. I'm, I'm sure we all have been your, our brains out. When I study for exams, I remember when I was in um, school. Definitely. Very, very good. Great job, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Excellent. <laughs> well, I hope all of you watching stay safe and healthy. I hope that you never have to use this voca these vocabulary words. But unfortunately, uh, we all feel uh, under the weather at times. We always, we sometimes feel sick. So I hope these phrases can help you next time you go to the doctor or tell someone how you feel, okay? Thank you so much for your participa participation, but it's not over yet. Remember, if you need to double check our lesson, please check our Cambly channel. It'll be posted there. And now it's the time for me to ask you some questions. Let's review what we learned today, okay? Let's review. So let's start by, I'll be asking you some questions and you can type in the chat, uh, chat box the answers. So let's start with my first example, okay? I'll move right here and it says, I'm congested. I can't well. <clears throat> Remember, I'm congested. I can't. <clears throat> Can you complete the sentence? Type in the chat box. Wow, very good. <laughs> Excellent, everyone. Very, very good. Remember the correct spelling. Um, inhale could work, but we normally say something else, okay? I see some um, put type inhale. It could work, but there's something, something else that I'm looking for, okay? We normally say another word. Please type in the chat box, I can't. I can't. Very good. Well done. Excellent. Remember the correct spelling. We need a verb. This is a verb that we're missing here. Okay. Very. All right. I see a lot of people are missing the, the, <laughs> I almost give you the answer. <laughs> Please make sure that the spelling is right. You're missing a, a letter, letter E at the end. I'll give you that clue. Okay. Uh, I can't. Hmm. All right. <laughs> okay. Here. Well, I see a lot of people. Okay. Yes. Remember, one is a noun, one is a verb. <laughs> I think you guys got it. And the answer is breathe, breathe, breathe is the verb. I can't breathe well. Inhale, like I said, inhale could work, but breathe is the more common verb to use. I can't breathe well. I can't breathe well. Good job, everyone. Excellent. Well done. One down. Um, Four more to go, okay? Great job, everyone, excellent. Here's our next one. Um, our next one is, my, my friend can eat gluten. My friend can eat gluten. He has a gluten intolerance, oh, yes, a gluten intolerance. She has, <laughs> she has a gluten intolerance, her, her. <laughs> I almost gave it to you again. <laughs> Her blank gets bloated. When she eats gluten, her, her, <laughs> I keep trying to tell you the answer. Her gets bloated. What gets bloated? What organs 
organ can get bloated. My friend can't eat gluten, her blank gets bloated. Excellent, well done. Well done, I see that. What gets bloated? Excellent, very good, very good. Okay. Well done. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Great job. Great, great job. I'm so proud of you today. That means that you paid attention. Excellent. Great job. Well, well done. Nice. I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which organ would we use for this? If you have a food intolerance, which organ would you say gets bloated? Good, 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 excellent. Thank you, everyone. That's right. Her stomach gets bloated. Her stomach gets bloated. That's the organ that gets bloated. Very good, great job, everyone. Thank you, you got it. All right, next, next in our list is very easy. <laughs> Um, I study very hard for a long period of when if I study very hard for a long period of time, I get a what do you get if you study for a very, very, very long time? Ugh. If I study for a very long time, I get a grade. Well done. Yes. <laughs> Fatigue. <laughs> yeah, that means that you're very tired. But yes, but I'm looking for another word that we saw today. What do you get if you study for a long time? Great. Yes, there are two possibilities. That's right. Good. Great job. Excellent. Good. I see people putting one or the other. Either one, it's okay. Um, it basically depends on how long it lasts. Remember, one thing eh, could last a few hours or just an hour or a few minutes, but another one lasts longer, days, hours. It's very, very severe, very painful. So you could say either one. Excellent. All right, great. <laughs> if I study very hard for a long period of time, I get a headache. It's okay. And migraine is also possible. Basically, the difference is how severe the pain is, how long does it last. If it lasts for days or hours, a long period of time, then you might have get a, a, mig a migraine after studying too hard. But mostly, most likely you get a headache if it's just a, for a short period of time and then it goes away and it's not too bad. It's just a, you know, a little headache. So very good. Well done. Headache or migraine, it's okay. It depends on what happens to you. So either one, it's fine. Okay, now our next one, I'll see. Okay, we'll review the, the idioms that we saw today. And please notice how, um, I have two blank space, blank spaces, okay? And this is an idiom. We saw three idioms today. I'm sorry, I can't come to the party. I'm feeling blank, blank. Uh, remember, what is the idiom to say that you feel a little sick? Uh, not too well, just a little. Yes, excellent. Well done, you remember. I I can't come to the party. I'm sorry. I'm feeling a little. <laughs> great, great. Three words, blank, blank, blank. I'm feeling great. <laughs> bad is okay, but just a little bad, okay. Three, yes, oh, I'm so happy to see that you got it. You remember, please keep using, keep using this idiom. It's a very important idiom. Yes, so um, 
I'm feeling, I can't come to the party, I'm feeling under the weather. Great job, everyone, yes! <laughs> Very good. Let's see, I have just one more, one more question for you, okay? This is for, uh, um, this is another idiom that we saw today. And my stomach was blank, blank, when I heard the news. My stomach was blank, blank, when I heard the news. Uh, what is it? It's an idiom that we saw today. My stomach was... When I heard the news. Yes. Great. <laughs> very, very good. Great job, everyone. Thank you. Two words. Two words. Good job. <laughs> Mm, remember, yes, when you're shocked or surprised, wow, you heard either good news or bad news, okay, two words, uh, okay, Emmanuel, that is, when you miss a beat, is a heart, heart, in this case, is your stomach, so thank you, thank you, everyone, yes, Good job. Good job. Excellent, everyone. Thank you. Yes, I'll, I'll show you the answer. It is in knots. That's right. Remember, that is used for stomach. My stomach was in knots. And that is when you receive, when you're, um, you hear something, you see something, and you're in shock. <gasps> okay. My stomach, oh, it, you actually, not shock, sorry. <laughs> when your stomach feels uh, like tight, oh man, my stomach is in knots. Yes, very good. Sorry for confusing you. <laughs> it's combined, it's combined. Um, okay, my stomach was in knots when I heard the news. All right, well now, this is your time. Thank you so much for participating. Thumbs up, clap, very good. Now, this is your time to ask questions. So you can ask me questions now, but as a disclaimer, I'm not a doctor or medical professional, but if you have any questions about um, the vocabulary, words or phrases that we saw today, I'll be happy to help, okay? <laughs> I'm not a doctor, nurse, or medical professional, but I can help you with the vocabulary words that we saw. Do you have any questions about the lesson today? Please type in the chat box. Um, Excited. <laughs> I'm waiting. Okay. Uh, any questions, everyone? Anyone? Mm, thank you so much. Oh, okay. I'm really glad that you liked it. <laughs> what does it mean? Okay. Uh, related to our lesson today. Being brings. Why do we use the plural form? It's that idiom. It's an idiom. Okay. That's why we use a plural, plural form. It's an idiom. Um, okay. Uh, what else? <laughs> All right. I'm feeling out of, sor uh, out of sorts. It's I'm not feeling well. Okay. I'm not feeling out of sorts. I'm not feeling well. Great. That's a very good idiom as well. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. Um, okay, let's see. That was Hassan who said that. I'm feeling out of sorts. I'm not feeling well. Any other questions? I'm looking forward to seeing you again. I am super, I, I love our live lessons. So thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, if no one else has any questions and everyone enjoyed the lesson, I'm very, very happy to hear your feedback, okay? And um, please remember the pronunciation of words. I'll just, I'm just gonna go briefly over some of the words that we saw today. Ache, stomach ache, headache, sharp, sh sharp, sharp pain, bloated, inhale, Exhale, okay? Congestion, when you have fluid. Congestion, phlegm, phlegm, or mucus. 
And then we have constipation, constipation, <laughs> diarrhea, pulse, tachycardia, and migraine. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, thank you. For those who are unfamiliar with Cambly, Cambly is a platform, an English platform that gives you instant access to friendly native English speakers like myself or a world so you can practice grammar, pronunciation, reading comprehension, or if you have an English exam coming up and you want to be prepared for it, Cambly is an excellent lesson, excellent choice for you. You can take English classes anytime, anywhere, right from your phone, or your computer, or um, during your lunch break, after school, after work, you choose. It's a very flexible and awesome platform. And I have wonderful news for you today. You can get up to 36% off Cambly using the code GOLIVE. So that is our promo for today. Promo, get up to 36% off Cambly using the code GOLIVE. Thank you so much. Thank you all for your, thank you all for participating, for typing your answers, for um, being here, for joining. Excellent. I appreciate everything that you've done today. I hope to see you all again. Please stay safe and take care and I'll see you next time. I loved it today. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.